have been with us since the beginning of creation. Every major religion mentions their existence. Although they keep a low profile, they are always with us. Sometimes they have been even known to intercede in the affairs of mankind, in times of crisis or spiritual renewal. We call them angels. The word itself means a messenger or one who is sent. We live in a vast sea of energy. Everything, every atom, every subatomic particle is in constant motion, spinning eternally. Even in the cold, dark, absolute vacuum of empty space, there exists what new physics is calling the quantum vacuum flux. It is the ether of the ancients, the life force energy of metaphysics, are the random fluctuations of this vast field of potential in which space and time are embedded. Now, theoretically and mathematically proven, the question no longer is, does this zero-point energy exist? But rather, can we tap this inexhaustible resource of free and unlimited energy and manifest new technologies which are both inexpensive and environmentally safe? One thing is certain, if we continue on the course of rapidly burning fossil fuels and relying on nuclear fission, the future of our civilization is in grave jeopardy. We're at a critical juncture where the ravages of industrial pollution and radioactive waste have exceeded the carrying capacity of Mother Earth. Our finite reserves of oil and gas will be completely exhausted by the year 2025 at the present rate of consumption. Large corporate and governmental self-interest ignore this pending crisis and resist change to the status quo. The question must be asked, is this the kind of world we want to pass down to future generations? Emerging on the frontiers of science, a pioneering breed of theoretical physicists and inspired inventors are challenging the way we think about harnessing the unseen forces of nature. Despite ridicule, lack of funding, and outright suppression, they are confronting an outmoded classical worldview and ushering in a monumental scientific revolution. In this program, you will witness the groundbreaking work of tireless inventors and visionary scientists who may hold the keys to true energy independence for every person on Earth, from Nikola Tesla to the reality of cold fusion and beyond. Join us as we present Free Energy, the race to zero point. Transmuting base metals into new, more refined elements was once the long sought after effect of the medieval alchemists. Turning lead into gold was a mythical dream until modern science proved that it could be done, although it required an immense amount of energy, making it highly impractical. Yet as early as 1992, cold fusion experimenters began reporting unusual appearances of trace amounts of different metals such as copper, silver, chromium, and zinc when examining their spent cells. Rechecking for possible contamination, scientists like Bacris and Miley confirmed that indeed new metals and isotopes were being formed, transmuted, during the process which produces excess heat. It was the start of the biggest cover-up in history When a rancher named Mac Razzle found some wreckage and debris Stuff was so unusual that the army had to see Major Jesse Marshall thought it wasn't from these parts And when they plot to cover up it's then the rumor starts Ship skin was thin as foil, strong as steel, it's a fact Couldn't cut star break or bend it, couldn't dent it with an axe Inside were these ivies with some real strange encryptions Just like hieroglyphics or stuff written by Egyptians Flying saucers been reported all across the 48 
but who thought they'd hit the ground like a crumpled license plate. When the army realized just exactly what they found, they packed it up on great big trucks, quarantined the ground. They sent it to Wright Patterson, the Air Force base of choice. A little while later, and our government changed its voice. When the army's press release first said a flying disc had crashed. Now it's just a weather balloon that ended up all smashed. The whole thing sort of blew over till a few short decades later. Story got to interest UFO investigators. Witnesses came forward swearing aliens arrived. On a distant summer night, they said some died and some survived. Flying saucers been reported all across the 48. But who thought they'd hit the ground like a crumbled license plate? Folks swore they must be Martians who had come here to invade But they're only crashed as dummies, so the Air Force thus explained Crashed as dummies Crashed as dummies Crashed as dummies Crashed as dummies It was rumored they had big heads and four fingers on each hand Kinda looked more like a child than they did a grown-up man Locals, they'd been threatened not to ever say a word Scared that they'd be ridiculed and made to look absurd Despite the passing years, government stories pretty rusty Hot air about balloons and up to spy upon the Rusties okay. Throw in some crashed as dummies to explain the alien guys They must be the only ones to believe in their own lies Flying saucers been reported all across the 48 we thought they'd hit the ground like a crumpled license plate Our government reassures us nothing's happened secretly So my friends, no more loose ends, is everybody happy? Crash this dummies, 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 crash this dummies They must think we're only crash test dummies Community garden activity has often paralleled economic or social crisis. In the 1970s, the United States experienced a substantial increase in community gardening primarily because of two factors, heightened environmental awareness and severe economic recession. In fact, 40% of all existing community gardens in America originated in 1975, a year with sharply rising food costs. In response to this sudden trend, federal and local programs arose to support urban gardening activity. One highly significant program was established in 1977 through an amendment to the Smith-Lever Act of 1914. The urban garden program was designed to teach low-income people the technical and nutritional aspects of gardening in all 50 states and would eventually create funding for the local version, Common Ground. In Los Angeles, the community garden movement was initiated by Mayor Tom Bradley in 1973. Inspired by the victory gardens of his youth and utilizing financing through CETA, the Comprehensive Employment and Training Act, Mayor Bradley established the Neighborhood Gardens and Farms Program, which evolved into Metro Farms, a nonprofit agency responsible for obtaining land leases and providing insurance for community gardens. <laughs> 